Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14. Now, so I don't have to uh, read this account. Just uh, guess verses 1 through 9. It's an account where Herod, you all know the account where John the Baptist was beheaded and what took place. And um, basically his, his daughter asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter. And he was, Herod was kind of drunk and didn't realize that what he was saying, but he gave her promise, whatever you want. And that's what she wanted for a mother. And um, he really didn't care for John the Baptist because basically John the Baptist called him out and said he was in adultery. And so he had John in prison. And then uh, when you pick it up in verse 10 of John chapter 14, it says, is that, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was bought in a charger or on a platter and given to the damsel. And she bought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. Now, I want you to just not let's not repass this real fast. John the Baptist was Jesus's cousin. Remember that if you go, go back and read history of the scripture, that was his cousin. And they come and they bring word that your family member, your cousin, who you love, who you have been communicating back and forth to uh, while you both are in ministry, has been executed for some foolishness. We're not talking about something that, I mean, just killed for some foolishness. Now, the Bible just said here that when Jesus got word, he separated himself and went off on the ship to be alone. Now, don't forget now, Jesus, though he is the Lord and he is the Savior, he's still walking in this earth as a man. So he has emotions. And so my cousin's been executed. How many of y'all had a serious situation, emotional pull on you that I just got to be by myself just for a minute, just for a minute, because I'm hurting right now. My cousin's dead. It says in verse 13, I'm going to read that again. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And then the Bible says, and he healed their sick. Now, when I read this scripture, I think about what strength he had. Oh, my God. You're hurting and you're in so much pain. And there are people who don't know what you're going through, yet they still have a need. And his compassion overrode his emotions to get him to move towards going and walking in the anointing and the call that he was called to. That's powerful to me. And I said, Jesus, how'd you do that? Because, see, here's the deal. Regardless of what's going on in your life, when people got a need and you got the gift, the need never stops. Mm, right. It never stops. And if you're called and you got an anointing on your life, and I'm not, I'm not going to teach to you tonight like you're just regular uh, congregation. No, you're called and you're all leaders. Everybody in here has got something on their life and somebody needs you. You're here for a reason. And we're all not just called the things, you're called the people. So you might not stand behind a pulpit and preach, but there's something that you're called to do. If you're no more than just a father or a mother, that's a call. That's an office. Amen. And so when things come up in your life, you just can't quit. Can't stop being the provider. Can't stop doing what you got to do. You got to still do it. For a pastor kid say this, women do what they uh, have to do, but not because they want to, it's because they have to. That's everybody. That's not just women. That's everybody. That's everybody. When pressure's coming up in your life, you still got to produce. Now's not the time to quit. Now's not the time to give up. I hear people say, I got to take a break. <coughs> it's too tough right now, Elder John. I can't serve in ministry. I can't do this. They're quitting jobs. They're making foolish decisions. And you think, here's what you think. You think that you're getting the break. You can't run from it. 
And here's what you do. Here's how you let the enemy know he's not going to take your life. He's not going to take your family. He's not going to pull you out the car. Is right. you have to endure. 